Okay, so uh, as I told you, we need more exposure. So I prepared the patient now with being, uh, having full exposure of the chest, uh, anterior and posterior aspect. Uh, still you use the sitting position and uh, you start examination of the chest specifically now, which is the last part of the respiratory system. The examination of the chest uh, includes inspection, palpation, percussion, and auscultation, four parts. And we start by inspection, uh, and we look at all the aspects uh, of the chest wall from anterior aspect, posterior, and the axillary aspect or the lateral thorax, okay? And this is uh, the advantage of having your patient in a sitting position so that you can see all these aspects all at the same time. Uh, and when we start by inspection, we look at four main things. So remember, four, inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation, and the inspection also includes, uh, four, includes four aspects, which is examination of the skin, examination for chest shape, looking for deformities, and chest movements. So uh, we, look, we start by skin, uh, as we see in the slides, looking for lesions and pigmentations, so you look carefully, okay, you have to be careful and remember to see all sides, look at the back, you should have good light at the back, uh, look for the skin, uh, for any lesions that you can see or any abnormal pigmentations. You can see these in the slides, there are different pigmentations and types that you will have more about them when we take the dermatology lectures, the big different pigmentations and lesions that you can see and how you describe them. Uh, you have to look at the skin also from the aspect of surgical scars. Uh, there are patients that you will see in the hospital that they come to us and they have scars from previous surgeries. Uh, um, the scars will appear in different ways. And you, the slides here shows uh, uh, some types of uh, scars in the chest, the midline sternotomy scar, thoracostomy scar, uh, and you have also uh, small scars of uh, the video assist thoracoscopic surgery fats. And you can have some uh, scars that are related to a chest drainage or chest aspiration. Uh, there are other scars which can be traumatic scars. So it will be easily uh, you can differentiate between whether you are seeing uh, like a traumatic scar from accidents or a surgical scar and you should be able to differentiate between the two because the surgical scars usually will be seen in a very uh, descriptive way as the slides show. Uh, now after you finish the skin from these aspects, you look at the chest shape, uh, the chest, how the chest shape appears. There is a normal chest shape and there is abnormal chest, or there are other abnormal chest shapes. So uh, the, uh, look at the first thing to look at the chest shape, you look from the profile and you see what we call as the anterior posterior diameter. And the normal people, the anterior posterior diameter should be uh, like narrower than side to side diameter. Uh, so if you look at the anterior posterior diameter from here, it should not be bulging, and it should be much less than side to side. Once you start to have wide AV diameter, wide uh, anterior posterior diameter, this uh, this is actually indicates that you ha you the patient start to have what we call as barrel chest, uh, where the anterior posterior diameter is almost equal to side to side diameter of the chest. And this is a sign of barrel chest or hyperinflated chest that can be seen with, with COBD and patients with obstructive airway diseases. So anterior posterior diameter and its comparison to the side to side diameter is very important start with examination of chest shape. Uh, the chest shape also should include asymmetry. Because normally, all of us, alhamdulillah, we have actually symmetrical chest shape. Uh, the right is almost the same looking as the left. 
However, in patients with diseases, or they have abnormalities, or they, uh, they have deformities, you may see asymmetry. And as you see in the slide, the asymmetry indicates that the right side is uh, not similar to the left, and this is abnormal. So if you define any symmetrical or, or asymmetrical uh, chest uh, shape, you have to specifically say that and mention it. Uh, sometimes it's important to be at the front of the patient rather than the side and look at the symmetry, uh, symmetrical or asymmetrical shape from the front, okay? And also from the back, you go back, look at asymmetry from the back. You can also look from the top here and you can see whether the chest shape is symmetrical or asymmetrical by having such look. So all of this trying to find symmetry or asymmetry of the chest shape. Uh, of course, if you, mention, if you find it, then you have to mention it and describe it as it, it shows. Uh, looking for deformities is the other part of inspection. And the deformities that are very important of the of, or the common deformities that we face are deformities of the sternum and deformities of the spine. Deformities of the sternum, normally in normal people, the sternum will be uh, having uh, like a symmetrical uh, shape and it will not be bulging and it, or it will not be uh, like pushed uh, uh, inside. Uh, if you see it pushing inside, which we call as funnel chest or bictus extirpatum, as you see it in the slide here, this can happen as one type of deformity of the spine. Uh, and uh, there are causes for it. Uh, but at, at this stage, we just look whether it is present or not. Another deformity of, this, of the sternum is the pigeon chest or the bictus carnatum. And again, you see it in the slide, even by the x-ray. And you can see that the sternum will be bulging anteriorly. Uh, and that's called pigeon chest or bictus carinatum. Uh, these are the common deformities of the uh, uh, sternum. Now, the common deformities of the spine will be from the back, where you see the spine abnormal. And uh, to look at that, you have to look at the spine from behind. 